my name is Mark Fulcher, and in this clip, I'm going to show you how I examine a shoulder. The first thing we're going to do is ask uh, Jesse here to take his shirt off so we can have a good look at the shoulder. So as with any other joint, an inspection is important. So uh, first we have a look at the shoulder from the front. And we're really looking for any asymmetry or obvious differences between the shoulder. So in an athlete, we might look around the AC joint, see if there's any difference between the two sides, see whether that, that joint is more prominent. We might also have a look at the deltoid muscle, just let your arms hang loose, Jesse, um, to see if there's any obvious wasting uh, between those two muscles, which you might see after a shoulder dislocation. We're going to ask Jesse to, to move side on. So side on, we can have a, a closer inspection at the deltoid. We can have a look at the cervical spine and have a look at the normal cervical lordosis. And then if we get Jesse to turn and face away from us, from behind, we also have a good opportunity to look at muscle wasting. A good area to look is in here around the infraspinatus. In an older athlete, if we see infraspinatus wasting, we might be thinking about a rotator cuff tear, as opposed to a younger athlete like Jesse, where we might be thinking more a suprascapular neuropathy. Another important place is to look is around the shoulder blade position or scapular posture. And if we ask Jesse to bring his arms up and down at the side, so we're abducting the shoulder, we can have a look at the scapular rhythm to see if there's any prominence of the scapula or scapular hitching. So inspection is really important around the shoulder joint. So Jesse, if we get you to turn and, and face towards me again. The next thing we're going to do is palpate around the shoulder. And I think there are some important places to palpate. I start anteriorly around the sternoclavicular joint, follow along the clavicle, and then palpate on top of the AC joint to see if there's any tenderness there which we'd expect if someone had injured the AC joint. I then palpate on the acromion, and then anteriorly over the long head of biceps. And it's difficult to palpate, but we're trying to palpate the greater tuberosity over the lateral aspect of the shoulder. Also useful to palpate along the upper traps region here. There's often some trigger points which are quite tender to palpate. So having had a, a good feel around the shoulder, we can have a look at Jesse's shoulder movements. So if you turn your thumbs out to the side, Jesse, and bring your arms up at the side, so we're abducting the shoulder. And a normal range is somewhere in the region of a 170 to 180 degrees. So we're also asking whether it's a painful movement, um, and it looks as though that's relatively comfortable. So come down, Jesse. Shoulders up at the front. Any pain or problems with that? And then we can look at rotation standing up. External rotation, if we keep your elbows tucked into your side, Jesse, how far out can you get your elbows? So external rotation. And then if you turn side on, so you're facing it. And then how far up your back can you get your arm? So one at a time. And you can document the spinal level that they're able to internally rotate to. So if you compare there and then the other side, he has symmetric internal rotation. So we can assess range of motion standing, but I prefer to do that lying down, and we'll have a look in a minute. So face the camera again, Jesse. And I'm going to test your rotator cuff power. So first muscle is the supraspinatus. So there are various different ways we can test this, but we want the shoulder to be internally rotated and the arm abducted in the scapular plane. So that's halfway between neutral and forward flexion. So hold there, stop me pushing down. Any pain or weakness with that movement? So symmetric there. If we test infraspinatus, keep your elbows at the side there, Jesse. Stop me pushing your hands together, looking for any pain or weakness. The subscapularis we can test either with a belly press test, so hand on your tummy, keep your elbow forward. It's an important part. Stop me pulling that hand off your tummy. So good power there. The other option is a lift-off test. So if you turn side on, hand up your back, so internally rotate fully. Can you lift that hand off your back? Hold your hand there, stop me pushing towards the wall. So that's the subscapularis liftoff test. So having assessed uh, rotator cuff power, my preference is to then do the rest of the examination with the athlete lying down. So we're gonna ask Jesse to lie uh, with his head on the pillow, lying flat on his back. So having got nice and comfortable, I like to assess shoulder rotation in this position. It's important to remember that the, the athlete may have shoulder instability, and so we don't want to be too cavalier with this. So I bring the, the shoulder into a 90 degree abducted position, so just relax there, Jesse. And with my hand over the front of the shoulder, I gently externally rotate. So 
we're just assessing range of motion, so he's got no problems with that. So 90 degrees range of external rotation there, and internal rotation, we can get to about 80 degrees. So if you suspect this athlete may have had an instability episode or a shoulder dislocation episode, the anterior apprehension test is also done in this position. This is why it's important to have your hand over the front of the shoulder. So we've got a hand here applying a little bit of pressure over the anterior shoulder, pushing in a backwards direction, and we're asking, do you have any pain or apprehension with that? Are you worried about that movement? And if the athlete starts to feel worried, we can add more pressure with our hand over the anterior shoulder. Does that make your uh, nervousness or apprehension feel better? And then uh, the test, as it's described, is to do a surprise test, to take your hand away from the front of the shoulder, and it's supposed to increase the athlete's apprehension. But my view is that that's not a nice thing to do. So if the patient becomes apprehensive and the apprehension improves with pressure over the anterior shoulder, for me that's a positive test for shoulder instability, anterior instability. The next test I like to do is a, a series of tests for uh, shoulder impingement. So Hawkins and Nears tests are described with the athlete in a standing position, but I feel I have more control if I do this with the athlete lying down. So Hawkins test has the athlete's shoulder abducted, uh, forward flexed to 90 degrees, and then fully internally rotated. So what we're doing is internally rotating Jesse's shoulder and taking it into slight adduction. So any pain or problems with that, Jesse? No problem. So patients with rotator cuff pathology or rotator cuff impingement will have problems with that. Nears test also describes standing up, has the athlete starting with their arm at their side and their arm fully internally rotated, and we bring that into a flex position. Um, I do this with the athlete lying down, shoulder fully internally rotated, and we're bringing it into a flex position, full flexion. Any pain or problems with that? So that's how I do Nears test. When the athlete's lying down, I also do a test for AC joint dysfunction. So I think the patient has an AC joint pathology. I take the arm into full crossbody adduction and add some extra pressure. And if the patient has AC joint pain, this crossbody adduction will usually cause pain in the region of their AC joint. The next thing I'm going to do if I think the athlete has shoulder instability is ask them to sit at the end of the table. So if we get you to come sit over here, Jesse. Athletes with instability may have multi-directional instability, which means that their shoulder is uh, looser than most. And so a useful test here is to do a sulcus sign. So we ask the athlete to have their arm hanging nice and loosely by their side. And we're having a look around the lateral aspect of the shoulder as you imply some uh, traction force inferiorly to see whether there is a sulcus or uh, evidence of laxity. And there is a suggestion of a sulcus here as I apply some traction. So that's how I examine a shoulder. I think if you have an organised approach, you'll be able to identify the different causes of shoulder pathology.